So if you want to sell options like a professional, then you need to understand your tools. The Greeks. Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, they aren't just some academic thing. They are actually how you describe and understand every risk you're taking as an option trader. And if you don't know what risks you're taking, then you're basically just gambling, period. This video is a simplified version that's going to cover all the Greeks in basic detail so that you can at least understand the bigger picture. And then in other videos, we'll do deep dives into each Greek individually. So together right now, we're going to break down the core four Greeks, what they really mean, how they show up in your trades, and how to use them to structure strategies that actually get you paid. By the way, here's the deal. If you like this video, at the end of it, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algo, and there'll be a lot more content like this on the way. All right, so first things first. When I talk about risk in this video, what I'm really talking about is the exposures that you have when you put on a trade. I'm not talking about danger. I'm talking about exposure. For example, buying a stock means that you have exposure to the stock's price. If the stock's price goes up, then you're going to make money. If the stock's price goes down, then you're going to lose money. One of your risks that you're exposed to is share price. Now, it's easy to understand that when we're talking about stocks, but with options, there is a lot more exposures that we need to take into consideration, which is actually a part of what makes trading options so cool because all these different exposures allow you to create some really interesting and specific trades. All right, so there's many exposures, and we're talking about the main four ones in this video, which are your exposure to share price, which is called delta, your exposure to how fast that price changes, which is called gamma, your exposure to time decay, which is called theta, and your exposure to changes in implied volatility, which is called vega. These Greeks, delta, gamma, theta, and vega, tell you how much of each of these types of exposures your position that you have on actually has. For example, if you wanted to put on a trade that says, I think these options are expensive, but I don't know what direction the stock is going to go. It could go up, it could go down. I just know options are expensive. Then what you're really saying is, I want exposure to the difference between implied and realized volatility. We now know what view you are trying to express on the market. And what we need to make sure of is that the trade we place expresses that view or gives us exposure to the difference between implied and realized volatility while mitigating our exposure to other things. So if we think about the Greeks, which ones do we want? Well, we wouldn't want delta because delta is what direction the share price goes. That's literally what we said we don't want. So we would want to be delta neutral in whatever trade we choose to place. Gamma is that realized volatility component, how fast the share price changes, right? How much volatility there is. So we would want to be short gamma because we think realized volatility is going to be less than implied. We want to be short that fast movements. Because we think that over the lifetime of the option, the moves are going to be less than implied. We want to be long theta, meaning as the option decays, if nothing's happening, we want to be making money. And then lastly, we want to be short vega. Because if we think implied volatility is going to overstate realized volatility, we want short exposure to a change in implied volatility. Meaning if implied volatility starts to come down because the market realizes, hey, this stock's not moving as much as we thought it would, we want to be making money from that too. And then we just find trade structures that actually express these views, right? That delta neutral, short gamma, long theta, and short vega position. Any of those really give us the exposure that we are looking for with this trade. You can probably guess which ones have this by now if you've been trading options for a while. This would be your short straddles, your short strangles, things of that nature. And that's why understanding your Greeks is so powerful. It changes the way you speak about options. It changes the way you think about options. And it allows you to place the trades that correctly express your view on the market. And you got to understand this because options are complex products. They have something different than stocks, which is convexity. And if you're going to place real trades and actually put some meaningful capital behind them, you probably want to understand what you're putting your money behind, right? I think of these as understanding the tools of the trade and in any profession, you would want to understand them. Like imagine you hired an electrician to come and do work on your house. He shows up and then he tells you he doesn't even know how to use a drill. What would you do in that situation? Well, you probably fire him like immediately. And so if you want to trade like a professional, it's pretty much assumed that you understand how these tools work. And that's why we're making this video to help you get started on that journey. Now, one thing that I really want to get clear on is that understanding your Greeks is not an edge. If you go on Reddit, you go to Theta Gang, things like that. A lot of times you'll see people saying things like the reason I make money is because of Theta. And by the way, if you want to learn five of those reasons, you can click the link in the description below. You get seven day free trial with predicting alpha and you can steal my five strategies. No problem. So yeah, it's important you understand your Greeks, but remember, they are not your edge. They are a mandatory component of successful trading, but you're going to get paid for coming up with good ideas. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dive into each Greek individually, not too deep, just the shallow end of the pool, just so you understand a little bit more about how each of them works. 
All right, so first up is Delta. Delta measures how much an option's price changes for every $1 move in the underlying stock. Let's say a call option you're looking at has a delta of 30, or as it might appear in your brokerage as 0.3. And let's say the underlying stock goes up by $1. That call option you traded is now going to increase in value by 30 cents. If we multiply that by 100, because each call option controls 100 shares of the underlying asset, you would see a $30 return or a $30 change in the P&L for your trade. Now, when we're talking about delta, a few things to remember is that calls have positive delta, puts have negative delta. And this makes sense, right? If you have a long put, you're making money if the stock goes down, meaning that you're negative delta. If the share price is decreasing, you're making money. If you have a call option, you have positive delta, you're making money if the share price is increasing. Now, what about stock itself? What's the delta of a stock? Well, it's one. If you bought 100 shares and the share price went up by a dollar, how much do you make? Well, you make $1 a share and therefore $100. Now, one last thing I'll talk about with Delta is that some people use it as a quick and dirty formula for calculating the probability of an option trade being profitable. If an option has a Delta of 50, some people will use that to say, hey, this is basically a coin toss. If an option has a Delta of 20, they'll be like, hey, there's a 20% chance that this is profitable. It's not an exact science, but as a new trader, it's fine to use that as like a quick and dirty formula for calculating the probability of profit. All right, let's talk quickly about our second Greek here, which is is gamma. So gamma measures how fast your delta changes as the share price changes. So let's say you originally traded a call option with a delta of 30. Well, guess what? It's not actually going to stay at 30 as the share price changes. If your delta is changing quickly, then you have a very high gamma exposure. And gamma is highest in near-dated expirations and for at-the-money options. Long gamma is something you want when markets are moving way faster than expected. And short gamma is what you want when options are moving less than the market forecasts that they will. And that's why option sellers hate that violent price action that can happen sometimes. It's because they're short gamma. Now, something that you're going to learn more about as you watch our videos and as you get deeper into the world of option trading is that gamma is actually the reason that option selling as a strategy is a profitable thing to do. Gamma is something that people are willing to pay a premium for. It's what allows options to be a good hedge for a long equity portfolio. It's what allows options to be a good leveraged bet when people are trying to gamble on a stock they like. And it's because of gamma that somebody is willing to pay you theta which is the next Greek that we're going to talk about. So theta is just time decay. It tells you how much value an option is losing every day. If your option has a theta of negative 0.1, then what that means is that this option is going to lose 10 cents of value every day, all other things held equal. If you're buying options, then theta is working against you. And if you're selling options, then theta is definitely working for you. Now, as an option gets closer to expiration, theta accelerates. Because think about this, right? On the last day that an option is around, 100% of the option value can decay, meaning that the theta decay on the last day is 100%. But if there was 100 days to expiration and now we have 99 days, well, it's definitely not 100% decay. It's maybe like 1% decay. And that's why near-dated options lose value faster if no big moves happen. Now, as I say this, it's important to remind you that there is no free money. And when you are collecting theta, you are holding risk on behalf of someone else in order to collect it. Someone is paying you theta for exposure to what? Gamma. And that brings us to our last Greek for the video, which is Vega. Vega measures your sensitivity to implied volatility. If your option position has a vega of 0.25 and then implied volatility increases by just 1%, well, you will see a 25 cent change in the value of your option. When you're buying options, long calls, long puts, you have positive vega. And when you're selling options, short puts, short calls, you have negative vega. Now, where is vega highest? It is highest for longer dated options that are at the money. So when you think volatility is going to increase in the future, you could buy some longer dated options and if implied vol increases, you're going to make money because of that vega. And likewise, if you think implied volatility is going to contract, you can be selling some longer dated options and then make money if the implied vol level comes down. And there's some really interesting strategies that we've talked about in some older videos that utilize this vega concept to make some really great opportunities appear. All right, so now that you understand the core four Greeks, let's just spend a bit of time here and talk through a couple of examples of how these are used to structure trades. This is kind of where we'll go from a theory component to a strategy component. And I just want to give you one more reminder. Always remember that the Greeks are just describing the position that you have on. It's telling you about the exposure that you have to the market. For example, when you have no trade on, what are your exposures to the market? Well, you are 
delta neutral, vega neutral, gamma neutral, and theta neutral. But when you have an opinion of something that's going to happen, you want to pull some levers to adjust that neutral exposure to give you exposure to the tickers you want or the industries you want and the components of change that you want, right? Maybe you want to be long delta or short delta or delta neutral. Maybe you want to be long, short, or neutral on any of these other Greeks as well. And it's by putting on trades that you are going to adjust your exposures. When your exposure matches your opinion and your opinion is correct, that's how you make money. So as option sellers, one of the most common ways that we are applying the Greeks is when constructing delta neutral strategies. If you've been selling options for a while, you should be familiar with this idea of, I don't want to have to guess which direction the stock is want to go. I want my strategies to be neutral on direction. Understanding your Greeks is really going to help you do that. So here's an example. Let's say you sell a 30 day at the money straddle on a ticker that is trading at hundred dollars. What you're basically saying is that I think this stock is going to move less than the market expects. And in order to get that, you put on a trade that gives you the following exposure. It will have neutral Delta, short gamma, long theta and short vega. We don't care what direction the stock goes. Theta is kind of like the rent you're collecting for giving someone exposure and the exposure you're giving someone is gamma. And then you have your short vega, which is if the level of implied volatility or the opinion of the future starts to calm down, then you're going to make money as well. Now, obviously, as your trade progresses, these exposures can change a bit. And that's why the game of trading becomes maintaining exposures. And that's where things such as delta hedging come into play to help you maintain that delta neutralness we had at the start. And there's a few other things that we should understand as well. Given that this is an introductory video, we're not going to get into that right now, but I will be releasing a video shortly after this one about Delta hedging that if you subscribe, you'll definitely get a notification for. So now I kind of alluded to this second trade example earlier when we talked about Vega, but there's a really cool trade structure that we can do when we think the level of implied volatility is going to change. Let's say that XYZ company just had a massive sell-off after earnings. The stock is now down 60%, but it started to stabilize. You look at the option chain and you notice that implied volatility is still elevated. Maybe you use a volatility cone or an IV rank or one of these metrics to say, hey, wait a minute, implied volatility should have come down after earnings, but it hasn't. It is still elevated because there was such a violent move after the event. The market is still just pricing in more fear than really seems necessary. So you go out as the savvy trader that you are and you sell a 180 day straddle on that ticker. Why did you sell a 180 day straddle? Because you want Vega exposure. The trade that you're putting on here is one where you say, hey, there's still too much fear being priced in. I think that's going to calm down. Basically, you're saying, I think the level of implied volatility is going to decrease. So you want to get maximum Vega exposure and minimum exposure to, let's say, Delta, Gamma and Theta. Where is Vega highest? in the at the money further dated options. Where is gamma and theta lower? Well, we know that they're highest at the money and in the short dated stuff because that's where quick movements really impact your option price. But we also know that when we go really far out, our theta is really low. And if theta is really low, gamma is also really low because they are actually inverses of each other. Remember, someone pays you theta for what? Access to gamma. So you go out and you structure this 180 day at the money straddle as a way to get exposure to Vega so you can make money if the level of implied volatility decreases. I know that that sounded extremely complicated and it kind of is when you first hear about it, but once you wrap your head around these concepts, it is a game changer. It changes the way you think about options. So just watch that section back a couple times if you need to. And if you have questions, leave a comment below this video. I will be more than happy to help you. I love this stuff. I think it's really cool. I'd be happy to chat with you about it. So now just bring it back to this theta and gamma discussion. So every trade you put on is a trade where you are trying to monetize some component of volatility. That's what options are. They're volatility instruments. And Greeks are what help you understand that. Want to profit from time decay? Then you're probably trying to put on a theta style trade. You want to profit from volatility coming in? Then that's a vega style trade. Don't want to be wrong on direction? Go delta neutral. And don't want to blow up from fast moves? Then maybe don't have a lot of gamma exposure. And this is generally how the pros think about their option trading positions. All right, now it's homework time. We are going to do a cool exercise together for the next time that you put a trade on. What I want you to do the next time that you're putting on a trade is just take out a notepad and a pen. I know we're going old school here. And I want you to write out your opinion of what's going to happen on a piece of paper. For example, maybe you write, I think implied volatility will be higher than realized volatility over the next 10 days. And I do not care what direction the stock is going to go. Then what I want you to do is translate that into your Greek exposures. 
which in this example, you would write delta neutral, short gamma, long theta, and short vega. And then I want you to answer one more question after you do that. Which trades give me that exposure? What structure do I need to trade to get that exposure? By doing this process where you go from trade idea to understanding your exposures, to understanding what structure gives you those exposures, it's gonna tie everything we just covered together and give you an awesome understanding of how Greeks play a real role in your trade decision making. Now that you understand your Greeks, it's probably time to start getting some really good ideas to start using in your portfolio. Guess what? That is why Predicting Alpha exists. We are a community of hundreds of traders that work together to find an edge and trade boring but systematic and profitable option selling strategies that actually generate a return. Right now, there are five strategies that our community has access to, and we basically have a masterclass that teaches the strategies, and then we have a tool that helps you scan and analyze the best trades for each of those strategies. We have members that have been with us for years and know why people stick around for so long, because these things are really awesome and they actually help you run a great portfolio. So if you're a serious option seller and you're trying to start trading things that just work, not because some guy on Reddit said it, but because as you'll get in the course, there's a mountain of evidence and, and years of professional research supporting these ideas, then take a free trial in the description below. You get seven days of free access. It's more than enough time to pour through all my research and basically steal these strategies. And if you find them valuable and you think these tools will help you run an amazing portfolio, then I look forward to having you stick around in the community. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out. And of course, if you're a serious trader, free trial in the description. Got questions? Leave a comment. That's all I got today, everyone. Happy trading. Talk soon.